Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. We're, We're back. back. <laughs> you know who else is back? Orville Dedenbacher. What's up with the phantom mask? Shh, his face is decomposing. His face is decomposing? His whole self has been decomposing since we dug him up. <laughs> ah, you're back too, I see. I made an exterminator for what exactly? <laughs> In case you're wondering why we were away for so long, it's because for the last year and a half, I was working on this book, Gothic Life, The Essential Guide to Macabre Style. And I put three to four years worth of new Gothic homemaking content into this book. This book is full of dark decor DIY ideas, creepy cocktail recipes, uh, sinister soiree ideas. It is just jam-packed. This book nearly killed me and it ate part of my soul. So I would highly encourage you to order a copy in the link in the video description below because not only will you be getting this book full of incredible content, but you will also own a piece of my soul. That's true. Yikes! And now that the book is done, we can finally get back to making gothic homemaking episodes. Yay! So buckle up because we're about to take you on our very first Halloween home decor hunting spree of the season. Are you ready? Absolutely. Then let's go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where it all began. Sioux Falls? Sioux Falls. I didn't say Gravity Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Be cool to check out there, too. Yes. Sioux Falls it is. Take a look. I was performing in Sioux Falls, South Dakota as part of my Halloween Forever tour, and the next day the promoters of the show were kind enough to join me on my very first Halloween home decor hunt of the season. We kicked things off at their local at-home store. Inside, we were immediately greeted by an island of magnificently macabre decor. I regret not having bought one of these cushions. I think Orville would have really liked one. I was intrigued by this Southern Gothic mirror, as well as by this Southern Gothic spill-proof tablecloth. And speaking of spills, I thought this skeletal spoon rest was really quite interesting. I have never seen a spooky spoon rest before. I could get into it. I ended up buying several of these tombstones. I find them very useful for letting your guests know where to sit by customizing them with each guest's name. They might come in handy at my next spooky soiree. Every year it seems they add new animals to the skeletal section. This year there were plague rats and these crazy armadillos. There was also a very nice large skull whose eyes someone bedazzled with skeletal dragons. I try not to be a stickler for anatomy when the end result is a truly terrifying critter like this spider. Though some do leave me a bit bewildered. Cerberus, my lapdog, is skeletal as can be. And this bat I just used to make a mummified vampire bat taxidermy gaff for my gothic life book. Expect to see an episode on that later in the season. Come to think of it, I might make another one. They had human-sized skeletons and ones that were larger than life, but folded up nicely for getting tucked away for when it's not Halloween. Wait, isn't every day Halloween? Yes, my friend. Yes, it is. I was really surprised and excited to see this year's color scheme was red and black, with all sorts of witchy motifs like witch hats and black cats, and other spooky bric-a-brac. They had this small carnivorous plant, and Audrey too, if you will which must make this big one an Audrey 3. They were a big hit with the local promoters, but all agreed they'd be better if the teeth were sharp instead of rounded. Speaking of rounded, I found this beautiful decorative bottle and you know I always check to see if it's functional. Eureka, I can put poison in it. So I grabbed one of those. They also had a cylindrical one. I think these are going to look really great in my Apothecary cabinet, one of my favorite projects that I made for my Gothic bathroom renovation. And you can find out how to make one in this episode called How to Make an Apothecary Cabinet. Incidentally, these Apothecary labels I designed are now a free download on my website, Voltaire.net. You can print those out and use them in your very own dark DIY projects. And you can find those at the link in the video description below. And now, Back to our Halloween haul. Yes. Next, I found one of these wreaths, which I recently used in my Bats Wishes place card holder project for the Gothic Life book. 
and you can see how to make those in an upcoming episode this season. Don't push it, Phantom! Well, okay, but no cannibalism this time. I cannibalize these reefs for a lot of DIY projects. They had orange pumpkins and pink pumpkins, and I had an eye on this one that looked like the Cyclops from The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, one of my favorite films from my childhood. I thought I was looking at welcome mats, but then I noticed that this one was a washable kitchen mat. And well, let's just say I needed to have a better look at that. Oh yeah, this is going to look great in my newly renovated gothic kitchen. So that went in the cart. In the lawn sign section, I really like this haunted home sign. Pity we don't have a lawn. But if we did, I definitely want some gravestones like these on it. And this is the part where having a few friends with you makes Halloween home decor hunting so much more fun because you can illuminate all of the tombstones at once. Now that's brilliant. I've always loved this particular item. I think it looks like something I'd design. Maybe I need to branch out into inflatables. I was intrigued enough by this mirror that I went back to take another look, but I couldn't really see it in the box, so I looked it up online. The silver finish wasn't really working for me, but I think it's gonna look great when I paint it black. So into the cart it went. Yeah, beat it, loser. I'm gonna like your skull when I use it as an ashtray. Boys, behave yourselves. Mom, he started it. <laughs> in this traditional Halloween section, I saw these cuties from last year hanging out in a pumpkin. And finally, honorable mention goes to this piece. While I felt that the bats could have been more realistic, I really liked that it was made out of natural materials like metal and wood. Overall, very nice. Now, as you guys probably know if you watch this show frequently, the next chain that typically puts out their Halloween offerings is Home Goods. So while I was still in Sioux Falls... Not Gravity Falls? Not Gravity Falls. <laughs> while I was still in Sioux Falls, the promoters and I went to a local Home Goods store. Take a look. We arrived at their local Home Goods store, and when we entered, we were greeted by witches and skeletons hopped up on caffeine who were all ready to... Lend a hand. Even dark side royalty awaited us sitting in their spooky thrones. It was a good sign that this visit was not going to go bust. You know the drill, I look for things that are spooky, that don't make us say, boo. I pass over the cutesy items and do some real digging for more elegant and dapper wares. And sometimes while moving stuff out of the way, I find myself saying, hey, this candelabra is actually pretty nice. I think this might fly in the lair. This year there were a lot of metal snake themed items, like this incredible candelabra. And this metal and glass candle holder was slithering its way into my heart. I stupidly passed on these bat themed hurricane candles because I was certain I had bought them last year. They had a really nice looking bat on them. But then I realized it was this one that I'd purchased with a far less good-looking bat sculpture. I was intrigued by this glam vampirus bust. She reminded me of one of the unconventional conventionalists from Rocky Horror Picture Show. And let's be frank, no one seemed pleased with the skin tone on this Frankenstein bust. We all felt he just looked too healthy. But then we turned him over and realized he had red light-up eyes, which made him look truly demonic. And then the colors just all really seemed to work. And then I bugged out when I saw this item. We'll call it the Holy Grail. Allow me to explain. Every year there's an item that everybody is looking for that no one can seem to find, okay? A couple of years ago it was that white witch hand from Bath and Body Works. No one could find it anywhere. Well this year we were in Mexico City for all of July and people kept posting images of this black metal candelabra from Home Goods that had bats on it. And it was really nice looking. And I started freaking out. I was like, oh no, we're missing all of the great Halloween home yeah. decor hunting. <laughs> and I was really stressed out about it. And I thought, well, when we finally get back, we'll look for it. And I finally thought that I had found that item. But then I took another look at it and I realized this one was not it at all. It was made of resin. 
However, I still thought it was pretty cool, so I bought it anyway. But that's the story of my life. I'm on a never-ending quest to find the very best Halloween home decor that'll look great in a gothic lair all year long. And I do it every year, so it's like an epic spooky fantasy novel, but longer. And speaking of books, they had these faux book storage boxes that have become quite ubiquitous. They were pretty cool, but of course I prefer the ones I designed myself. I call them the Treasure Tomes. This gothic collection of faux books features the classic horror novels Dracula, Frankenstein, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They're made of much sturdier materials than the ones you'll find at places like Home Goods and Marshalls, etc. And they're covered in a textured faux leather material that really makes them look like real books. Unlike the cardboard ones you find in stores. They look great on a shelf. They are extremely handy for storing all of your most private items. But what you choose to put in your treasure tomes is between you and your god. <laughs> Another item I was bowled over by, however, was this marble and metal coffin-shaped serving tray. But it was so heavy, I didn't think I'd be able to get it back to New York City in my luggage, so sadly, I had to leave it behind. And not to be a drama queen, but I nearly died when I saw this item. This really looks like something I might find in a palace in Indonesia, so I just had to have it. And speaking of Southeast Asia, I really like these giant spiders made in the Philippines. I absolutely love that they're made out of natural materials. On the way out of the store, I spotted these salt and pepper shakers for dark side royalty. They're gonna add a little spice to my next recipe. Big thanks to my friends in Sioux Falls who joined me on my very first Halloween home decor hunt of the season. That was a whole lot of fun. You know, as a touring musician who plays every week of the year, I get to do something pretty unusual. I get to go Halloween home decor hunting in a different city and a different state every single weekend of the season. But nothing beats getting to do it with my favorite person at the Lair of Voltaire, Mayumi Toyoda. Yay! <laughs> You're not even my 10th favorite person in the Lair. Ooh, that's got a sting. So once I was back in New York City, Mayumi and I went to our local home goods store. Woohoo! take a look. We entered our local home goods store and didn't immediately see any signs of Halloween. But then I spotted this frame that I thought was rather handy. Now I ended up going with this pumpkin spice hand soap dispenser because the resin hand it came with was far more ghoulish. I got my talons on these spooky candles and the dark and stormy candle had a fragrance that we could both agree was truly enchanting. There was skeletal dishware, but one of the standout items was this death head moth ceramic tray, which would be the perfect place to display these death head moth teacups. But what really got me coughing up the dough was this cast iron loaf pan by Smith and Clark. It had a skeleton engraved in the lid, so presumably any banana bread you make is gonna have a skeleton on it. And the loaf will be shaped like a coffin. This thing is as genius as it is heavy. Now it's always all about digging here, and if you do a good job of it, you just might find things that you dig. Like these skeletons that I dug up last year. You've gotta get through the kooky to get to the spooky. Like this candle holder that looks like it came from a medieval dungeon. I found this marble serving tray closer to home, but someone had placed some metal objects on it and created some scratches I didn't think I'd be able to buff out. And speaking of buff, I couldn't wait to lift this beautiful metal bowl up and into my cart. It's definitely flying home to perch in my new gothic kitchen. In the towel section, Mayumi liked this towel with cute ghosties. While I, of course, preferred the piratey skull and crossbones myself. We found a placemat with beautiful skeletons, but I didn't like the balls, the disco balls. I preferred this. And I picked up this incredible tablecloth, as well as this one with a violin playing skeleton. It looked like a design right off of one of my old band t-shirts. While looking for kitchen towels for the lair, I found this one that I thought that Jade the Libra might like. 
so I got it to give to her when I perform in Kansas City later in the season. And while bling's not my thing, I took a shine to these sparkly skulls. Speaking of which, this shiny skull was one of my favorite items from last year. Then we spotted this guy, and it was apparently a mortar and pistol. Oh, the potions I will make in this thing. Time to call the jungle doctor. I was wondering who actually buys this cutesy pink Halloween stuff when suddenly... Oh no. Dark gods, why have you forsaken me? And in case you think we didn't find Jack, I spotted these stone skeletal coasters that at seven bucks were a stone cold bargain. I love pink Halloween. What's wrong with the pink stuff? There is actually nothing wrong with the pink stuff, darling. There really isn't. I actually really, really love that there's so much diversity of style when it comes to Halloween offerings because that means that there's just something for everyone around Halloween, even in New Jersey. Oh no, anywhere but Jersey. You might recall that last year, Mayumi and I took a ferry from Manhattan over to New Jersey to visit one of their home goods stores. And it was a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Remember that boat ride? Yes, I loved it. It was so beautiful. The sky was blue and it was warm out. It was, it was like being on vacation. I never thought I'd be on a boat. <laughs> a big blue watery road. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> this year we did not get as lucky. It was a gray and gloomy day. But when you're Halloween home decor hunting, some might say that's perfect. <laughs> we embarked from Manhattan on a ferry that would take us away from our magical city in the clouds, across the Hudson to the gloomy rain-drenched shores of Edgewater, New Jersey. There Halloween awaited us with head bobbing glee. And this fellow seemed head over heels for this year's Halloween offerings. I spotted that glam vampirus again, but this time with a little bit of digging, I saw she had a male counterpart she could count on. Mayumi is particularly good at spotting hidden gems, and it was she who found this candle stand that I had somehow overlooked. The sculpting was really great, but I didn't like the paint job. I think it'll look much better after I paint it black. Next, Mayumi found these witch hat decorations, and I thought, hey, you could wear those as part of your witch costume. Again, you have to dig through spooky bric-a-brac to reveal the true gems. I thought this cat might be one. I really love the concept, and I love that it's made of metal. I just wish the face was a cat skull. Another near miss was this tombstone. It was made of stone and heavy enough to be a real one. I just wish it was more ornate. They also had these coffin-shaped shelves, which I thought were pretty good as well as solid, but I already designed my own, like this petite coffin-shaped cabinet you can get in my web store. It has doors so you can really hide your things away from sight, and they feature a hand-drawn spiderweb illustration of mine, and crystal skull door pulls for a truly elegant finish. So while these were quite nice, I passed on them. Now this is a new trend I really love, and that is bringing artisan handicrafts into the Halloween market. And these spiders that were made in the Philippines were really mabute. They'd be amazing for a tropical gothic or summerween theme. So I bought four of them. This headless horseman is a figure I've seen on Jade the Libra's mantle from time to time. And at this location, they had several versions of this haunting item. There was one with a green oxidized finished holding a jack-o'-lantern, sure to make the original green with envy. As well as a couple of other incarnations. Someone must have really lost their heads on this whole horseman motif. This one gave me a chuckle because it looked like an Oscar specifically made for horror films. I'd like to thank the Academy. And yet again, Mayumi found a hidden item as we waited to pay. These skeletal salad servers are perfect for my growing skeletal cutlery collection, so I tossed them into the cart. While we were already in New Jersey, Mayumi and I decided to do something truly bold. As the sun was going down, we called an Uber and we plunged deeper into the darkness to visit another home goods store in a place called Secaucus, New Jersey. Yeah. Take a look! A tu ratatouille. <laughs> Shall we do it together? 
take a look. In this hybrid Marshalls and Home Goods store, Halloween greeted us in the form of an island of ghostly white decorations. Just behind it was a whole aisle of macabre statuary. I found this taxidermy gaff fairy particularly intriguing as it seemed to be taking cues from the oddities movement. Mayumi spotted my favorite item from last year, this metal skeleton in a tub. She also spotted another reoccurring design, but this time it was in metal instead of resin, which I really appreciated. Speaking of metal, I have metal spiders like these on the wall of my newly renovated gothic kitchen, and they look fantastic. I found this candelabra that I've purchased in years past. I had them in silver, but it seems someone painted it black, just for me, so I considered picking those up. And I really liked this weaved cauldron, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out what I'd put in it. What would you put in this cauldron if you owned it? Let me know in the comments. There was a collection of white items and a collection of orange items, but just around the corner lurked a very special fellow. A bit buried under a couple of these skeletal alligators I was already happy to be a proud owner of was this five foot tall majestic chrome skeleton. Now, the price was a bit steep, but nonetheless, I got carried away. And a few seconds later, he got carried away too. How would I get it home? I'll worry about that later. We spotted another one, but don't worry, I wasn't about to buy two of them. I did, however, buy two of these skeletal ice scoops for my next macabre mixer. And speaking of mixing, I found this Cosmopolitan cocktail mix, and while I'm not really the type to use a mix to make anything, I knew I had to have this bottle, so I bought it anyway. Then I noticed that the metal Kraken figure nestled between these bottles wasn't just decorative, it was a wine bottle holder, and could easily be a rum bottle holder. It took surgical skill to extract this shimmering silver cephalopod from its precarious perch, but in the end, wait for it. I had released the Kraken! What a find! Oh, I was really excited to get my tentacles on this to the bottom of the sea rum bottle Kraken rack. Wow, that's a mouthful. Silence, Phantom! <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of this episode. And as we do by tradition, we will now share each one of our favorite items from this particular Halloween haul. Are you ready, Mayumi? Yes. You go first. I go first? Yes. Okay, well, that, that Kraken bottle holding rack is certainly very high on my list. But my number one most favorite item has got to be... Can you guess? Mm. That five foot tall skeletal wine cooler. Of course. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now, <laughs> you may remember last year, I found something very, very similar. It was like a five foot tall metal skeleton. He had an ice bucket and top mm -hmm. hat. It had a matte finish and I wanted it so badly, but there was just no way I thought I could get it home from that store. This yeah. one I think is a vast improvement on that one. So I'm kind of glad I didn't get it last yes. year. And I'm so, uber thrilled that it fit in the uber that brought us <laughs> back to the lair of voltaire yay okay darling well now it's your turn what was your favorite acquisition from our halloween haul so far can you guess uh i don't know something pink <laughs> mm -hmm. i actually can i really don't know well my favorite find was also the skeletal wine cooler. The skeletal wine cooler? Yes. We chose the same item? Yes. That has literally never ever happened before. Yeah. How is that even possible? <laughs> because my favorite finds are in part number two of this video. There's a part number two? Yes. Well, you've heard it here <laughs> first, folks. So tune in for part two when we show you the rest of the best Halloween home decor items we have found this season so far when gothic homemaking returns. See you then.